Hi everyone, I'm Susan Hopkins and I'm here with uh, Stuart Shanker and I just want to date this so that uh, you can uh, put this in sequence if you've been doing any self-reg learning with us. This is August 2022 and we have made a a big shift, it, it, uh, an important shift, uh, and it's a shift in language, but it has many ripple effects because of how much of an anchor uh, the work of Paul McLean and the triune brain totally evolved. It's been evolved since it was first came out, but it's a piece of, of the self-break work. And if you've done any self-break learning with us, you would know that. And we made a big shift um, after someone brought to our attention uh, this spring, and I'm very thankful <laughs> that a, a level of discomfort around a label that we were using. And it is, uh, before we get into that, and I talked to you about why uh, we shifted um, a descriptor of, of a part of the triune model from brown brain to gray brain, um, I would just like to uh, invite Stuart, could you just really high level for us what the triune brain model is, uh, what Paul McLean's original idea was, uh, so that then we can explain why we've shifted what we've shifted and why it matters for folks. Uh, folks are going to have to um, join us uh, in, um, what, what's the name of the new series? Uh, they are Shanker Talks. Shanker Talks. So they're going to have to join us with the Shanker Talks. So uh, I'll tease that um, <laughs> uh, so that we can explain. Um, you know, uh, the triune brain was this idea that uh, we don't have one brain, but three brains in one, uh, a reptilian brain um, that what that evolved around uh, 200 million years, 300 million years ago, uh, and then a uh, mammalian brain around 200 million years ago, and then a prefrontal cortex, a neocortex around 3 million years ago, we'll say. Uh, and that's uh, uh, a really crude um, and misleading uh, uh, oversimplification of what the triune brain is really all about. And what McLean was interested in is how very ancient processes um, were transformed, were built on. That's how evolution works. Evolution tinkers away uh, uh, the famous term bricolage. Uh, you tinker away with what you have. And so ancient uh, neural hormones like vasotocin, which we believe was um, evolved, um, let's say 300 million years ago, slowly transformed into oxytocin. And we can explain all that. It's a very interesting idea, this idea that, that processes deep inside our brain, whose roots uh, whose roots are ultimately very ancient, have an incredibly strong influence on how we think, how we act, uh, what we feel. So we'll explain all that. Now, the gray brain is a very interesting, uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting area for us to be exploring. And the reason it's so interesting, Susan can explain um, the sort of moral reasons why we switched um, from brown, calling it the brown brain to calling it the gray brain. Originally, what I was thinking about was in neural imaging, the sort of cortical or prefrontal processes that we're really interested in in the blue brain are actually blue on the images that we use. And the limbic processes are red. And that's just a convention used in neural imaging. The deep processes, the processes in the midbrain and the, and the brainstem, they're very murky on images. And I never knew how to describe that. And in fact, at one point, I even considered calling them murky. Um, so <laughs> they were, they're, they're not really brown. They're a sort of, uh, they come out, they look a sort of grayish. When Susan told me, that um, you know the, the the reasons why we needed to make this change from brown brain to gray brain. I got excited, and I'll tell you why. I, I, so I was excited on a theoretical level, and the reason on the theoretical level is because gray has all these shades of red in it. 
red shades into gray. And what I loved about it was this idea that there is this sort of bleeding effect from the limbic system into the midbrain and from the midbrain into the limbic system. And in technical terms, there's this circuit that runs from the midbrain, from a, a little tiny system called the periaqueductal gray to the hypothalamus, which sort of sits in the limbic system, but it's right between the two, midbrain and limbic, to the amygdala. And from the amygdala to the, to the hypothalamus to the periaqueductal gray. So we have this circuit that goes from uh, midbrain to limbic, but also from limbic to midbrain. This has a huge impact on all kinds of aspects of our behavior. And it's incredibly important for us because what triggers this system, what, uh, what sends this system into you know, hyperdrive, if you like, is stress. And we can learn how to recognize the signs of when the system has been activated, the circuit has been activated. And we can also learn through self-reg how to manage that when we see this happening, what sorts of things we have to do. So for me, this was a very exciting step forward because it's really, um, it's really pulling the deepest parts of the brain into our orbit, into our theoretical orbit. We don't want to draw this sort of categorical distinction between gray brain and red brain. We want people to understand that there's this dynamic that's happening in the brain that's affecting how we think and act. Um, so uh, that's the reason, Susan, why I was so excited about this. This is a big move for us in terms of developing a truly holistic view of how the brain influ how the brain is influenced by stress and in turn what we can do uh, to learn what's happening and and self-regulate. So as all of you followers of Stuart Shanker and and learners on the journey of uh, learning more self-reg know uh, that like me, I you know I am somebody that I'm an educator and somebody trying to make sense of what um, the science that that Stuart brings forward and add, makes meaning of, and you know in some cases it pulls together in ways that I, I just I, I find. Uh, are really what are enlightening the path forward but sometimes the science can be overwhelming so <laughs> you know when you hear this and a if you love the science and you want to understand more and you are sparked by this there is a whole group of us uh those shanker talks that Stuart mentioned earlier are it's a monthly webinar that he gives on i believe it's the there's it's the last friday of the month at, from 9 to 11 um, Eastern, it's live and you can ask questions and it is really uh, where we get the latest learning. And so this is a part of what Stuart is doing in the fall of 2022 and you can get it on demand. So there's that piece of it there as well. But before I tell you why it was so important um, from, you know, Stuart talked about the moral values and um, the decision that we made um, to make this shift and, and how it came about and why we feel like it, it was it was the right thing and uh, and feel very good about it. I want you to also hear, you know, remember that self-reg is not just one piece of science triune, for example. Um, and it is a synthesis of many, many different areas and all linked together through, through the self-reg framework. And that's a very important thing because you know, when we when we begin to understand what's going on in, in a child or youth in front of us, it's not about on that child or the youth or our neighbor or our partner or the person we work with down the hall to change. This isn't a this isn't a framework for judgment or try harder. It's the very opposite. It's for understanding. And it's it's about recognizing um, this thread of people being a human being. This is all of us. And that, you know, through the, we talk about the interbrain and these connections and relationships and, and, and these are how the, the shifts can happen. But it's also a tool of equity from my perspective, because, you know, when we begin to think about not just, um, you know, 
the, the behavior in front of us in any individual and behavior can be the explosive telling you off, getting in fights, bullying, uh, swearing, lying, <laughs> stealing, uh, you know, or, you know, the hood up and I'm not going to be doing anything today, or I, I don't care any of these behaviors. You know, when we say they're just communication, that's, I know that term has been around a long time. No, what are they telling us? They're telling us that we need, you know, from a self reg lens, we, we take our why and why now. We're not just about managing stress. We're about understanding, you know, the beautiful complexity of being a human being. And it is definitely um, a model that allows us to find our way through our parenting, through education, through, you know, recognizing stress backpacks that are, inequitable you know we think we've got two kids showing up you know they both uh they both had 24 hours since we saw them last and here they are in school and you want to bet uh that one back one kid's stress load you know backpack is different than the others and how do we understand that difference Good. so it's a really important it's really my mind you know game changing the thing that i think is really important about trying in particular even if it's an oversimplification of some very complex science, you know, blue, red, and gray, uh, when we recognize that just about everything we do That's good. And that involves managing or teaching or parenting or any of these practices that we've done, um, they all are assuming that we're working with a blue brain, you know, <laughs> remember, I'm an, I'm an educator, not a neuroscientist, you're a clinician, but it, that's helpful to realize that I think I'm making choice you know, I'm talking about choices and options and try harder next time. And he could have, he should could have, or I should have chosen this mindset or yeah. Well, what happens when the brain and body, you know, are actually operating because they have a deeper purpose that outdates any, you know, of our education systems and it's, it's survival. And, and how do we recognize that? Not just as, as something to fix, because it's, it's something to understand and, and it's strength and has serves a purpose and how do we respond differently? And it's just such a game changer because so many of the programs out there, so we're not a program, we're a framework. And, you know, if you love a program uh, and, you know, I always invite people to think about, okay, when does it work and for who, right? That's an important question and from whose perspective. And if it does, we can usually have a look at it and we'll see that you, you know, that there was, I could explain it through a self right lens because, you know, you were recognizing and truly reducing stressors on kids, not adding them, truly reducing, you know, that you were helping build that stress awareness. So all these self right things, but, you know, men, most of them, anything that involves um, the thinking brain for oversimplification, making decisions and these sorts of things, it requires that the brain is operating, you know, feel in a way that it's not actually that, that survival is not front and center. And I'm oversimplifying it. Stuart will jump in and clarify. Oh, <laughs> he always does. But that's a really important thing. It's not about what I teach or what I say or, you know, the talk I have. Um, it, it, you know, that means absolutely nothing if the other human or humans, you know, if you're talking about in a class or a school or in a staff room or in your family, you know, we're all in a state of, ah. And sometimes, guess what? We're all in a state of, ah, you know, it's not just a choice. So it's a really important game changer. And I find it's very freeing to learn about. I've even done this, you know, talked to a three-year-old. I have a great story in early childhood course about this three-year-old that went, you know, what we would call red brain. And, you know, after in a, in a fairly short turnaround time, it doesn't always happen that way, but I could see that homeostatic balance, that openness to conversation. And I just took my hand and talked to him about, you know, um, a, a state change that went to, and he started asking me questions about <laughs> turtles and red, you know, and all of a sudden it wasn't, oh, I was a bad kid. No, you had a stress, you know, you had a, a response that happened, you know, something happened to you versus you chose. It is a real game changer. So why did it matter that we went, we, we changed it to gray brain? We had a, I had a principal send an email to me. It got forwarded to me this spring and uh, it, uh, it, someone that was learning self reg and was a fan of self reg, and his statement to me was that, but I've reached a point that I can't continue on um, using self reg, or uh, and the reason is the language of brown brain, and that it has um, implications. Uh, it has implications that that the very fact that the term brown uh, uh, connected to what's sometimes called reptilian brain 
or that is you know connected to these these more ancient processes and things were connected to brown which is connected to from a racist point of view could be connected to to people with brown and black skin. And that was really deeply problematic. Even being there when Stuart, I remember when we designed our version of that model and, and Stuart chose that. And I, I knew that there was nothing like that involved. Um, but once you see it, you can't unsee it. And it was a big choice for us, but it was an anti-racist action that we took. We're trying to do intentional things. If you see others that you need to point out, please do. We're learning, uh, we're trying to do so with humility. And when someone points out something that could be a stressor or a form of any kind of, of um, inequity or oppression, you know, be perceived as something that would do harm, we had to walk away from it. And it is hard. We have that model and those three colors everywhere. <laughs> uh, and yet it was the right thing to do. And we're very proud to have made that step. And uh, we thank you for, for, for hearing our story. And for those of you like me who have gray, <laughs> yes, we had to give some thought to the fact, okay, you know, connections with gray. Um, so, and, and we went with that um, with the best of intentions. And it was, it was one of the things we've always tried to do was keep those colors very simple. Um, so that was why the idea of a link of some colors and, you know, blue brain being all those things that we, we privilege as being, you know, for success in school and, and red brain, which by the way, for us is not all bad. It's not just, you know, our sentinel are looking for trouble. It's also what connects us and makes us feel alive and excited and, you know, the relationships and nurturing. And it has so many positive things when we're feeling in a, in a balanced state uh, and the gray brain, which Stuart has definitely um, opened our eyes to the neuroaxis element. So if you wanna learn more, come and learn more. It evolves constantly, uh, but really helping us understand things that, that in our own lives, in our own choices, in our own histories, in our kids, in our parenting, in our, our teaching, in our leading, that we do so with a judgment. There's our opportunities to understand the why and why now and, and, and find our path through. So self reg is magic. Come and join us and learn more. So thank you, Stuart. Did you want to say anything? Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> that was great. Okay. So thank you. If you see other things that you have advice for us on, we're all ears. We're, we're, we're trying to do right by the, all of the people that we serve and most especially the, the children uh, and the families and the educators. So please let us know. Take care. Bye.